three main units, or RMUs, are used widely on the distribution network. They come in all configurations. Here are some typical examples. They are used to switch power around the network, and as their name suggests, they are normally inserted into rings formed within the network to provide the loads with different sources of supply in case something goes wrong with the network. As RMUs are simple in nature, they can be protected by a single device called a bay controller. These are supplied from the manufacturer with its own software package, which allows the unit to be configured via the communication port using any normal laptop or PC. The unit can also be controlled from the front panel. This is normally used to check the values of the currents and voltages and see what alarms have been generated. On the right hand side of the unit, we have programmable LEDs, which can be set to operate when we get an alarm being generated on the RMU. As we've said, it's a multifunction device. From an RMU, the signals we will typically get are circuit breaker open, circuit breaker closed, and alarms and indications. These may include a low gas or pressure alarm. Next, we pick up the magnitude of the current from the current transformer located on the RMU. This is essential for the controller to provide all the necessary protection functions and provide an indication of the current back to the remote end. The unit also provides control signals, including open circuit breaker and closed circuit breaker. This allows someone back in the main control centre to switch the feeder on and off. Next, we have the trip circuit breaker signal, which energises the circuit breaker trip coil when the unit detects a fault on the system. And finally, we have our two-way communication link to the SCADA system, which allows it to control the position of the circuit breaker and monitor the analogues and alarms generated by the bay controller. Bay controllers are now inexpensive and can be programmed externally from a PC using the manufacturer's software. For these reasons, they are now widely used on distribution switchgears of all types. Even the cheapest versions have hundreds of protection characteristics available and can usually be connected via the fiber optic or RS-232 port back to the central control center. Here is a typical arrangement for an RMU. They normally consist of a circuit breaker connected to the feeder which supplies the load and two manually operated isolators to switch the power from the ring. On the left hand side we have the cable ceiling end which connects the power from the left hand ring. On the right hand side we have the cable ceiling end to connect the power from the right hand ring. Using this arrangement we can close the left hand isolator and the circuit breaker to feed power from the left hand ring. The isolators are offload devices, so to change the arrangement and feed power from the right hand ring, we need to open the circuit breaker first. We then rearrange the isolators, re close the circuit breaker, and we've now connected the load to the right hand ring. If there's a fault on the feeder, or we need to disconnect the load, we can open the circuit breaker, close both isolators, and connect the left hand ring and right hand ring together. This operation will only be done when one or both sides of the ring are dead, and is therefore only put into practice under the supervision of the network controller, who will ensure that this is the case. This flexibility shows why ring main units are used throughout the distribution network. The ring main unit is also equipped with some manual ground switches. Using these, we can separately ground the left hand ring, the right hand ring, and the feeder. Again, before we ground any part of the ring, this has to be done under the direct control of the network operator to make sure that the ground switches are not closed onto a live circuit. 
If we look at the front of a typical RMU, we can see the manual controls for the circuit breaker, ground switches and isolators. You will notice that this particular RMU has replaced one of the ring isolators with a circuit breaker. The RMU suppliers will give you any combination of isolators and circuit breakers that you require. In this version, we have circuit breakers on two of the legs. You can tell this by looking at the control switches and by the fact that we have a bay controller for each of the circuit breakers. Most RMUs normally have just one current transformer located on the feeder, which is then used to monitor the feeder current and provide the feeder with the overcurrent and ground fault protection that it requires. If a fault occurs on the feeder, the bay controller will trip the circuit breaker, removing the faulted feeder from the system. The decision on whether we use isolators or circuit breakers for switching the RMU supplies really comes down to how often they will be used. For most residential networks, the rings are set up and won't be reconfigured for decades, unless a cable fault occurs. In these situations, it makes sense to use isolators. For industrial networks, the rings may need to be changed daily, as the large loads on the networks change. And rather than send an engineer out all the time to change the isolator position, circuit breakers, controlled from the network control centre, will be used.